Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined by Dan Bell, Director of Sales at HiFX with our Never a Dull Moment Currencies Report. Welcome in Dan and Happy New Year. Yeah, you too Gareth, thanks for having me. Although it's certainly been a tumultuous um, start in global financial markets this year, obviously with concern around China and uh, oil prices etc etc. Um, but against this backdrop, the New Zealand dollar has, has held up pretty well. I mean, even up around sort of 68 US cents for a while, back yep. down a bit now. But I mean, what's, um, what's propping up the, the Kiwi? Yeah, good question. Um, I, I guess as we, as we finished 2015, December 2015, we saw the New Zealand dollar US rate get up to around 69 cents. So it had a very strong finish to the year. Um, things appeared to have sort of settled down in China uh, and naturally the, 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 uh, the New Zealand dollar offering a, a higher interest rate perhaps at that time of the year was attracting uh, more capital flows. So we, we went up against a lot of our major, uh, major, major cross rates. Um, but January we get back into it and suddenly China is back on the headlines and uh, we're seeing, you know, we saw significant volatility in the Chinese stock market through the first few weeks of the year, causing broad risk aversion across the market as well as um, continued weakness in oil prices. So oil prices continuing to decline, uh, sitting around $30 a, a barrel and causing, I guess, a lot of uncertainty about uh, where, where oil prices go from here, what impact that's going to have on the oil and energy sector and some of those big oil exporting countries out there who previously were generating huge uh, huge returns from oil and had sovereign wealth funds investing globally. So I think um, you know, the, the, the market is, is, is really in a stage of not quite panic, but, but certainly there's a lot of uncertainty at this time. And, and obviously um, we've had uh, uh, an OCR review from our Reserve Bank here mm -hmm. in New Zealand. No change, they've left the OCR at 2.5% and Graham Wheeler has made a, his first sort of major speech of the, the year and, and indicated that he's a, a reluctant cutter. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and, and obviously with that OCR at 2.5%, I mean, it seems ridiculous, but uh, that's actually very high now <laughs> by global standards. Um, yeah, yeah, well, it is. I mean, uh, our cash rate is, is one of the highest in the, in the developed world. Um, yeah, our closest trading partner, Australia, their cash rate is at 2%. So if you line everything up in the New Zealand economy, you'd have to argue that things uh, are a bit average. I mean, obviously, commodity prices have been hammered. Uh, dairy prices are already down again, another 10% uh, this year. Um, so, um, and you look at our, our major trading partners, things have, have started the year pretty sluggish and, and that ongoing uncertainty in, in China. Global equity markets are down sort of 15 to 20% from their peaks uh, last year. So um, in this kind of environment, you would imagine, well, you know, the Reserve Bank has got room to cut. Um, but the recent rhetoric from the RBNZ is that um, you know they're not in any hurry. Uh, obviously, they've got an underlying easing bias, but um, you know he's sort of looking through uh, the lower inflation outcome that the economy's um, generating and saying, well, actually, it's 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 pretty much oil and energy related. Um, and and I think his thinking is that um, there's not a hell of a lot that uh, a lower cash rate is necessarily going to do to inflation. So, again, focusing on the property market, Auckland property market continuing to hold up, and uh, other parts of the country um, having uh, having another you know strong quarter and obviously as we ended 2015 we'd had the US Federal Reserve hike um, their interest rates for the first time in almost a, a decade um, and the talk going into this year was there could be another four increases yeah. uh, in 2016 yeah that seems to be off the table now Big time. So um, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates for the first time uh, at the end of last year, and um, you know, in almost a decade. And um, at that time, the forecast was for probably a rate hike uh, of 25 basis points every quarter this year. Um, now, market pricing at the moment is barely pricing in a rate hike this year, and certainly no rate hike uh, over the next sort of three to six months. So suddenly you've got uh, the, the, the US Federal Reserve um, being questioned by the market around their interest rate policy and, and that volatility I think is a reflection of that, uh, of, that, uh, of that uncertainty of the market saying well is now the time to be tightening, tightening monetary policy in the world's largest economy when we've got um, you know, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of issues around the world. So um, the, the, the Fed again are going to be in a, in a really difficult position. Uh, we get a testimony from um, the chairman uh, uh, Yellen this week uh, to Congress in the US where we're probably going to get some insights into into her thinking um, but they are uh, going to be in another you know very very difficult position this year to try and raise interest rates when the market is saying now's not the time. And we've got uh, negative interest rates in Japan now adding to uh, what the EU's already got. Um, 
so you know look it's a it's a pretty sort of gloomy global picture yeah um and i guess with with graham wheeler um i think one economist last week after a speech said that you know wheeler would have to be dragged kicking and screaming to uh, cut the ocr again from here so with that sort of backdrop and, and the ocr that's high by global standards i mean is it is it going to be a story that the, the kiwi dollar will probably remain uh, reasonably strong for the next uh, few months Look, I would say in, in, in the short term we still remain quite vulnerable. Um, that being said, we're sort of uh, trading a range at the moment to, between sort of 67, 68 and, and down to sort of 64. So we're sort of trading about a, about a four cent range. Um, the underlying fundamentals in the New Zealand economy probably justify uh, the New Zealand dollar lower, but at the same time our interest rates are still much higher than most other countries. We've also got um, you know, the potential that the Fed push out further rate hikes, uh, which will be ultimately negative for, for, for the US dollar, and that could provide support to the New Zealand dollar, which ultimately the Reserve Bank doesn't want to see. They don't want to see the New Zealand dollar stronger against our major, major trading partners with weaker commodity prices and, and the, 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 the current backdrop in the economy. So I think um, particularly if we saw the Reserve Bank of Australia cut interest rates again, uh, if we saw the Federal Reserve, you know, push out the tightening this year, um, I think the the Reserve Bank is is going to the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is going to end up having its back against the wall, and and currency is going to have to um, you know factor into their decision making this year, particularly if we if we go up. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd be watching the global central banks as much as what's happening locally in terms of uh, what the RBNZ ultimately do. And and I mean we get obviously a lot of. Um you know, stories coming out of China and, and, and people question the data, etc. But are there any key things we should be watching from from uh, China for in, in, in this turbulent period? Oh, look, it's 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 all it's it's very difficult to, to, to say what's really happening in China, as you know. Um, you know, it, it would seem that the the, the Chinese uh, officials are, are are going to do what it takes to to draw on reserves and try to uh, you know try to create some stability to their economy. So, um, you know, their their recent run of data has been has been mixed. Uh, obviously, their their equity market continues to be uh, quite quite dysfunctional at times, uh, and the way that that sort of performs. Um, and, and I guess that they've got a long way to go before they evolve their financial system to be as as robust as a you know as a big you know big economy like the US or U, the UK. But um, so so China, it's it's always difficult to, to to see what's going on. Obviously, anecdotally, we hear some some pretty negative stories coming out of out of out of China, um, but they're still sort of pushing along at that same sort of GDP levels, close to seven. So um, you'd have to argue for the time being it's hopefully steady as she goes, um, but um, there's certainly um, a lot of uncertainty in the in the outlook. And I think the the uh, again the message this year, uh, as as I, as I thought last year, was that we're we're going to be in a very volatile year uh, on, on all fronts, whether it's uh, across the the equity markets, commodities, and and the currencies. Absolutely. Um, yes. So that tends to create a more negative uh, uh, a negative environment for the New Zealand dollar. Um, but at the same time, if the RBNZ um, you know, decide to keep interest rates where they're at, well, that should provide a bit of support for us. Yes, well, it's certainly not going to be a dull year. Anyway. Uh, no, indeed. <laughs> Thanks indeed. a lot for that, Dan. That's Dan Bell from HighFX, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.